Why would Pat Shermer leave it open whether or not he's going to start Eli next, uh, this coming Sunday? Are they giving up on the season after two weeks? I don't think that's it. I don't think this has been Eli's fault. So what, what exactly, if they put in Daniel Jones, why would you have even brought Eli Manning back this year? How do you feel about the season if they're 0-4? How do you, is, is that time? Would you tell me, when's the season over? What's the record that when it's done? Well, I mean, literally. Right? They told you, okay. we're not going to replace until the season's done. So when is it done? Like, the, the odds of making the playoffs at 0-2 is like, I don't know, 16%. So 0-3, I bet it's single digits. You know, so when is the season over? I would say the season's over. I, I don't believe in the mathematical stuff of it. If they're 0 and 6, 0 and 7, the season's over. Okay, so it's quite a ways away. Yeah. What yeah. do you think the and season's I think over at? I, I, I think the season's over. I, the mathematical, is, I understand that, but at some level, if they go 0 and, like, I, I feel like what happened today was, look, Eli's going to play this week, but if we go 0 and 3, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna feel like the season's slipping away from me as the coach because right. i got to keep my job. And then I think oh and four and then you like that's what we we got to change it. So that's why I think he's to me he's signaling that I told you we're going to stay with Eli as long as the season's in. But I might have to move that up if we can't win football games. Well, the regardless argument of whose fault it is. Regardless, I mean we realize it's not Eli's fault, but no matter whose fault it is, we don't win football games. I'm making a change. Well, the argument Michael and I had was like I agree zero and two seems a bit early. Because we've seen teams yeah. come back from 0-2. The Giants won a Super Bowl in 2007, <laughs> starting 0-2. But, Don, but, but Don, don't you watch? I mean, I, this is the most amazing thing about in the NFL. You have six months to contemplate big, huge, vital, existential issues that they have to deal with in the football team. And then one game in, and that six months goes right. away, and everyone panics. Right? Mm -hmm. They've seen it over and over and over again. So do not be, be confused. Is the panic sets in super fast? No matter how much right. oh, we had a plan, we had, it's the old Mike Tyson. You have a plan to get punched in the face. They're going to like, oh yeah, that plan we had. I'm a coach. I'm not. Well, I'm not going to get fired over this. And I think Daniel can do something. I'm going to make it. That's the kind of stuff that happens well, really fast. Well, I guess the, the argument was if, if they pull the plug, and I agree with you, even though they might be greasing the skids here, Eli's going to play against Tampa in Week Three. But they lose that game, and then they take on Washington. If they end up playing. Um, if they end up playing Jones in week four, it's not to create a spark. It's acknowledging we're not going any place. I want to play this kid as much as possible to getting ready a running start for 2020. So if they end up pulling the plug on Eli either this week or next week, do you think it's to create a spark and save the season or just an acknowledgement we're not going anywhere anyway, so let's get the kids as much a start as possible? I think it's a mix. Like, I'm the head coach. I know that's tough to coach here. The expectations are huge. You get run out of town pretty quick. Yeah, I have this plan, and I am on two and that. Yeah, I want to wait till the season's over, but I, I don't want to see it go away because I think if I got a spark and I got a kid that can really kind of move around a little bit because my offense, I would love to have a guy that could move. You know, let me get that guy quicker. That's the kind of stuff that's happening. I don't think it's binary. It's not like we wait till the season or not. I think it's both. And I think that I, by what I saw today, <laughs> I need a spark. Yeah, it's it, bigger that, than the season's over. It, I need a spark might be bigger than we're waiting for the season to be over. Here's what I don't get, though. The sooner they put him in, right, then I think that Pat Shermer's job is on the line. If they if they get to him later, then Pat Shermer goes, I didn't have a full season with the number one draft pick. If they put him in in week three or four, well, you, you know what? You had him for 13 games. If you don't win with him, we're going to bring in another coach. I think that both him and Gettleman yeah, are on the hot Michael, seat. I don't know. I feel like the transition, yeah, okay. I, they fired I, I McAdoo after two years. There. Yeah, there's a little calculus there, but I also believe he has some, he has some, he has another season to go get some space. And I, maybe the gamble is, I think Daniels can play pretty well. I mean, that's the gamble the head coach has got to make, right? I think he can play pretty well, make me look good, and, uh, and regardless of our record, people will say in the offseason, wow. That was a positive. What would we build on that? What would we be? You know, those are the kind of things that people bet their lives on, right? Do you believe, Steve, though, that, like, even if a little bit, they will be better with Daniel Jones at the helm than Eli? Uh, I mean, it's hard to play quarterback in the NFL. There's a lot of hurdles. And Eli's run over a lot of hurdles. And, yeah, Ray, Ray, you know, granted, he has many more that he can jump over. But there's also the odds of a new quarterback coming in and being a franchise quarterback are low. So you got... You got 
you got tough odds no matter what. So the idea that you're going to want me, uh, you want me to put percentage, I'll put a scientific percentage around the, <laughs> the odds that Daniel Jones ends up being a you know a franchise quarterback. That's those are low no matter what, no matter how you look at it. I, I was shocked when I heard this number and it came out because of the possible quarterback change. Are you stunned that Eli Manning for his career is 114 and 114? No, that's kind of how it felt. <laughs> it did. <laughs> it, it just, I, I mean, I'm honest with you. I just, that's kind of how it felt. And, uh, and, 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 what he, and he did some amazing runs. You know, that whole team did amazing runs the Super Bowl, and you just tip your cap for those Super Bowl runs and what they accomplished against all odds, beating a Patriot team that should have never lost in a million years. I mean, you play that game 40 times with anyone in the league at that time, and they shouldn't have lost that game. They did it. He did some her Herculean things, and I think that's the thing that I tip my cap to Eli. Is he did Herculean things that I just I'm going to that remember that frozen game in in Green Bay when he just threw it around like he was like a sunny day in Miami. I just those things I I'll never I'll always think that Eli is one of the greats because of the things he did in those Herculean moments. But as far as the record, that kind of feels like what what it was. So Pittsburgh loses Roethlisberger for the rest of the year. It, is it inconceivable that they might reach out to the Giants? Hey, if you're thinking about Bench and Eli, maybe we can make a deal. The, the families get along with each other. They're family members, for God's sakes. I mean, I would, would, that, would that, that work, or is that job. just inconceivable? Good job. No, it's not inconceivable. I mean, they love – there's no question how the Maris feel about Eli Manning. It just comes through every time. Like, even when they screwed up last year with the, you know, you're going to be benched, they're like, oh, you could see him. Oh, we're so sorry. How can – to you, you know, what can we never do that again? You know, there's just something special about that relationship. We should appreciate that in the NFL. It's very rare. And so I can imagine something like, like, hey, Eli, we, we're going to bench you and we want to give you the opportunity. We respect you. You know, the Roonies would like to give you a shot. I can, that doesn't, that doesn't seem far-fetched in my mind because of the respect they have for Eli.